about 80% of your content or like four out of every five that you post should be like whatever it is that you want to be known for. And then one you can kind of play around with, experiment with. Hey, I just wanted to hop in real quick and let you know that you should follow if you want more of these in your YouTube feed. Enjoy the Q&A. Let's get in and start answering some questions. Here we go. Twisted Compass. Does a ring light really get you better chances to be on the For You page? So the ring light just makes everything look better, which makes it more visually appealing, which means that people will watch your video for longer on average, which will increase your chances of getting to the For You page. Where am I from? New Orleans, Louisiana area. Preston asks, how important is using trending music versus the songs I actually like? There's, I think there's something to be said about the comfort level of like people, they hear something they don't recognize. I don't know, it can be, I don't know, I think it can like trigger a swipe almost. So I think that like in the early days, I was using songs that I actually liked and it kind of wasn't working that well. And then I started using more trending sounds. I don't think the familiar, familiarity of it can increase the chances of them staying longer. So uh, experiment with both. Now that my account has like a decent amount of followers, um, I can I can probably start influencing, right? So now you know, some people might think of my 60,000 followers as an influencer. So now I can maybe start using my own sounds as opposed to using trending sounds uh, and maybe start influencing some other people to use the same sounds that I did. So um, that's what I'm going to start doing more often. Um, but at the same time, I don't really have like a big music channel, so I don't use music that much. Hopefully that makes sense. Maureen asks, What's the best way? Well, Maureen asked, I just had a video go viral. Sorry, I lost your question. Jeez, here it is. I just had a random video go viral. What's the best way to use that momentum for more traffic? So if you have a video that went viral, you gotta think about what people are gonna be doing. So a lot of people are gonna be looking at your bio, not, not your bio, but your profile to see, okay, do I, do I like any of their other videos? And so what I would recommend you do is like, all right, what's a really good video that kind of bridges the gap between that viral video and the rest of your content? So when they see it, they're more likely to follow and be like, okay, this isn't just like a one trick pony. They actually have some other good stuff too. So what, it, what is that piece of content you can create that can really just bridge that gap? For me, with that 17 million view video that I mentioned, I made another video. It's like, all right, here are the five reasons this video got this many million views. Follow me for more TikTok tips. Right, so it was a pressure washing video, which which y'all know has nothing to do with my channel. But when I created that other video, it's like, well, here's why this pressure washing video got this many million views. Follow me for more um, TikTok tips. Adamosity, he's he's looking, he's looking for that profile review. I like it, Adam. So um, so yeah, that's how you bridge the gap. That's how I bridge the gap. I would recommend you try to find. I mean, you got to be creative. Um, try to bridge that gap. Just remember, people are going to be looking at your. Uh, your other content, your most recent content, trying to trying to decide whether or not they want to follow you. Of course, some people are going to be following from the uh, from the viral TikTok, but people who are on the fence, you want to help convince them. Stavrito asks, "Why does copying others get you viral?" Nice, Adam. All right, so why does copying others get you viral. I think it's because there's like a culture of copying on TikTok. I think uh, you should be crediting people when you copy them. But the question is, why does it get you viral? Well, you're taking a proven format, a proven formula, and you're just kind of recreating it. And I think a big part of TikTok is like hoping that you're the first person that that person on the, on the For You page sees. So like if they see your content first before other people, just maybe due to sheer luck, they'll think you're the one who created it. And so like you're taking a proven formula and you're just kind of recreating it and that works. All right, so if you want a profile review for all of those of you who are just showing up, we're doing uh, the biggest gifter. Whoever gives the most gifts during this um, during this live will get a profile review. So it's one of the ones that actually goes on my um, 
on my page. So you know, I, my 60,000 followers, at least a couple thousand people will see it. Mm, hopefully a lot more. So um, we've had, you know, we've had them definitely get over 10,000 before. Um, but the sky's the limit and they're not available for purchase. So it's a, it's actually a special thing. So, all right. It's Chrissy says, does privating videos hurt your profile? The algorithm, it could, nobody really knows for sure. Um, but just in case I recommend privating before deleting, uh, I would, I would imagine that privating is better than deleting cause it's just, you know, from, from TikTok's point of view, anything that, that gets deleted was just kind of like a strain on their resources for no reason. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of using their, their servers and, um, for nothing really. And then, and then it just goes away. So it's like, what was the point of all that? If you're just going to delete your videos, but in privating, at least you're keeping it live. At least there's a chance it can go live again. So I would think that's better. What do I consider viral says nurse Hadley. Um, I think you could probably apply the word viral to anything that gets above your follower count because it, that's, that's a sign that it, um, it had success on the for you page. And I think like truly viral is a million plus, especially if you don't have anywhere near a million followers. So, um, you know, it's, you know, you could really split hairs over what viral means, but I would just say like, Anything that's above your follower count is a success, and anything that's significantly above your follower count is viral. By the way, if I miss your um, if I miss your question, go ahead and re ask it. Oh, Dana, is it worth the time to go live for smaller creators? Um, I would probably say no. I would build up your audience first. The best way to build up your audience is not by going live, it's by creating a lot of content. Because live disappears, unless you, you, you do what I do. I take my lives and I throw them on my YouTube channel. I don't want this time to go to waste. Um, I, I do recommend doing that, um, that can help. And you can also, what I've done before is taken my lives and taken the video I create from my lives and then split them up and then create little TikTok posts out of it. Why not? Uh, so. But what I, what I see a lot of people doing wrong in the early days, they're spending too much time going live. You don't grow while you're live. You might get a few followers. Um, and, and yeah, there's going to be exceptions. Like when like you have a piece of content that's going viral and you go live, you're going to get a bunch of people um, following. But those people are probably going to be following you anyway, whether or not you were live. So keep in mind, you don't really grow while you're live. You grow from your content. Um, you get people to follow you from your content, not your lives, so, but your lives are really awesome for having a call to action. Like for example, I'm going to tell you all right now to go on my TikTok bio and download the free guide, my, my free TikTok growth guide. And it's got all my best tips. There's an example of a call to action that, that you can use, um, you know, for you, for you guys, it might be like DM me for, for this, um, you know, check out my website, whatever it is. So whatever your call to action is. Um, to your existing followers, your live is the best way to do that. But don't think that going live is going to necessarily grow your account. Um, and that, there's going to be exceptions to that. But for the most part, people are just like, it's just a great way to connect with your existing audience, not necessarily grow a new one. Hopefully that makes sense. Alex asks, is there a certain time to post that increase your FYP chances. Yeah, whenever your uh, target audience is most likely to be online, that's the best way to put it. Everybody's got a different target audience. Right now, it's kind of crazy with quarantine and everything, but on your typical day, like you gotta think about like, okay, well, are you going after the kids who are in school? Well, obviously, if you post when they're most likely to be in school, you know, not really gonna work that well. Rebecca asks, I'm doing one video per day. Is, is that enough? Should I do more? Uh, yes, assuming you can do high quality. So as many as you can do, as long as your quality is high, but at the same time, you don't want to get burnt out. If you're starting to get burnt out, it might be time to back off a little bit. I personally really like doing TikToks, um, especially now that my account is bigger. You know, a lot of people say, I don't need views to have fun on TikTok. Let me tell you, when you're getting a lot of views and a lot of engagement, TikTok is way more fun. I'm serious. It's like, it's literally night and day. Like. 
because I remember when my account was small, you know, you might get one comment a day. It's like, eh. but now it's like every time I check, there's like new comments pretty much. Um, and it's just a lot more going on. It's, it's intense. It's fun. Um, so yeah, I think it's worth it to grow your TikTok. It's just, it's just more fun when your account is bigger. Um, and you'll notice a difference from the time you go to like a hundred followers to like a thousand followers, you'll see a difference. And then like 1000 to like a couple thousand, you'll see a difference. And, um, yeah. So by the way, um, for those of you who just showed up, biggest gifter gets a TikTok review. Hey, we got a concert. Let's go. John Day. He's getting his, he's throwing his hat into the mix. I like it. Okay. Nick Torres asks, I've, I've got my niche videos public and fun videos, friends only. Should I make them public too? I would say yes. You don't want to go too crazy with the fun videos. I don't think like, okay, you got to figure out your target audience. And of, of course, if you have, if you've read the, the guide that's in my bio and my TikTok, you'll know everything starts with your target audience. So most of your stuff is like, all right, what is the target audience? What do you want to do? What do you want to do for them? What do you want to entertain them with? What do you want to help them with? Most of your content should be toward that. And you know, maybe one out of every four or five could be like something fun. That's more personal like whatever you're into. Like today, for example, I did a little Star Wars, little duet of, my, of just cause today's May the 4th or whatever. Um, I did, you know, my old Star Wars duet and I did a new little Star Wars thing just for fun, right? Cause who cares? Um, I don't want to be such a robotic type of account. Like I do, I am a real person and I like to have fun and just do whatever I'm thinking about at the time. So, so today, hey, let me, let me have some fun and see what happens. So, uh, I think that's okay, but if you go overboard with it and people get tired of seeing stuff that's not what they followed you for, that could be a sign of, uh, that could be something that triggers them to unfollow, actually. John Day asks, should you delete inactive users? Um, uh, you could. You could delete some of them, especially if they're really obviously like a fake or bot account. I think it would be okay to delete them. Um, but like, I think, you know, if you've done too much follow for follow or hype for hype or whatever you want to call it, and a lot of people have just followed you and they never ever interact and you're, and you're sure about that, I think it'd be okay to get rid of them. It's kind of hard to know who sees your videos though. So I would be a little bit wary. You never know who sees your videos, but if, and, and you know, just because somebody never comments on your video doesn't mean they don't like and watch your videos. So it's, it's a little tricky. So just be a little careful there. Connor wants a review, dude, I already saw your, I already gave you a review. Your stuff is good. <laughs> but if you want a more in-depth account review, I'm giving, whoever gets the biggest gift you're here, will be getting one. And we'll, I, I, and I won't be able to tell you who wins until after, because it doesn't tell me until after. All right. But right now I'm focusing on questions and answers. And by the way, I'm going to be putting this whole live. If you're late, if you missed the first few minutes where I, I was answering some important questions. I'm going to be putting this on my YouTube. So you definitely want to go, just go to YouTube and, and search for my name, Jeff Corrette. And then you can follow me and, and watch my videos. So that's a good way to like see um, if you missed any of the live. Because I know these lives are hard to um, watch the whole thing sometimes, just depending on what you got going on in your life. Twisted asks, how many posts a day is too much? Well, um, whenever your quality starts dipping, like I've heard of people do 20 posts in a day and as long as they're all high quality, it can be a really good thing for your account. But I think when you're too focused on quantity, you can start um, dipping in your quality. Um, and I, I'm not talking about production quality. I'm talking about like, maybe it was just a bad idea. Maybe it was just like a throwaway post that probably should have stayed in your drafts. Um, maybe it just like was bad for TikTok, and you just kind of knew it, but you posted it anyway, cause you wanted to hit a certain number that's kind of the pitfalls of, of quant quantity. Uh, and we see a guy like Zach King, I mean, extremely high quality, takes a lot of planning and production editing. Um, you know, he's collabing with, with famous people. So he only posts a couple times a week. And then we see Charlie and Addison post five, four, six times a day. Uh, maybe the quality isn't as high, but it still works extremely well for them. But they're also not posting 20. Um, but at this point it might even work you know, but I think when you're starting out, just go for a good mix of quality and quantity. 
Appreciate the shares, y'all. Shares. Thank you for uh, posting my tick, my YouTube link there, Rick Talk. Life, I'm sorry, Life of Rick Talk. Um, Ryan asked, how do I get to 10K? All right. Uh, I would start by downloading the guide that's in my bio. It's got um, just kind of like a three a three basic step of like figuring out what your target audience is, what kind of content you should be creating, and then like more tactical tips in terms of like how many posts per day, how long to make your posts and stuff like that. I would, I would definitely start there. What a lot of people do wrong in the early days is they're making content that's way too long. People don't have the attention span to wait even 15 seconds. Like if it's not a really engaging video, people aren't gonna stick around for even 15 seconds. So every single second matters. I think a lot of people are um, making mistakes with that. So, um, so that's an issue. I think a lot of people are trying to kind of copy like Charlie and Addison and they're not bringing their own, like, it's going to be really hard to, to beat Charlie and Addison. So I, I think that people should niche even more, like combine what Charlie and Addison are doing with cosplay or combine it with music or like just co combine different existing niches, um, and just kind of become the player in that space. Be the, be the person who's known for charlie style dances in costume right just to give you a, a quick example and that's just a way you could potentially stand out um you know there's a lot of people um doing comedy but there's not so many people doing comedy about you know let's just say snapchat comedy or something like that you know like um business owner comedy could be could be maybe a niche and there's a guy you'll probably seen him i forgot his name but he's he impersonates gary v business comedy, business impersonations, Gary Vee impersonations is a good combo. He's not just impersonating random people. He's impersonating one person. Um, and he does it really well. It's pretty funny, but I forgot his name. I'm sure some of y'all know who I'm talking about. All right. This question comes up all the time, all the time. How do I know if I am shadow banned? All right. So if, if, oh, man, you know, the, the word shadow ban, first of all, it's a complicated thing to answer because there's so many different types of suppressions that we've seen. In, in fact, if y'all pay attention to my content, y'all probably seen um, the guy, I, one of the people who won a profile review from me in my last live, because he was the biggest gifter, we, we found out that he was shadow banned because he had a offensive, potentially offensive username. It wasn't even that offensive. It was literally at Booty Meat Jr., Okay, so not even the most defensive username, but it was, you know, for TikTok's taste, I guess they're trying to get a little bit more family friendly. Everything was like he was untaggable. Now, interestingly enough, his content wasn't really getting slapped down that hard, but he was untaggable. I couldn't search for him. And his um, on the on the TikTok website, which is tiktok.com forward slash at username is how you can get anybody's account and you want to you, you do want to be checking your own account from time to time make sure everything's good but anyway his page wasn't coming up and immediately after he changed his username um everything went back to normal so that's a type of potential shadow ban so that's more of like a username shadow ban and then we've got like per content shadow bans which is like just like suppression which i've dealt with and it was never my entire account it was just like ind individual pieces of content for example, if I had a negative trigger word in my description, for, yeah, to block, okay, okay. We got some people getting their hats in the mix for that profile review, I like it. But anyway, I've had issues where I had a, the wrong word in my description, and then I reposted, which meant go into my camera roll, upload it again, and then use a different description without that trigger word. And I'll tell you right now, the trigger word that I'm talking about right now is the word breast, because I was making a video about cooking chicken breast. Right, but they didn't like the word breast. And yeah, maybe I could have left it um, around to like do whatever manual review, but I wasn't willing to wait that long. So I reposted it without that word in the description. Now, that word was still in the text bubble. Okay, so it was the description. Um, and then it went out to four point something million views. So when we talk shadow ban, are we talking about an entire account getting like suppressed? Or are we talking about individual per content stuff? Um, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky, right? Um, there's just the, the word shadow ban gets thrown around a lot. So another thing I noticed is a lot of people, when they say they're, or think they're shadow ban, they're actually not. They're just like uploading really like unengaging content or they're not waiting long enough. So like 
Somebody will be getting like an average of 300 views per video and then they'll upload two videos over two days, each one getting like 10 or less views. Well, it's like they think they're shadow banned. Well, really, they just haven't been uploading enough. Um, you know, posts on TikTok are like, I, I don't know. I think people just put too much faith in each individual post where like you should probably be posting like 20, <laughs> 10 to 20 videos uh, that do poorly before you start thinking that you're shadow banned. But people do it with like one or two pieces of content um, and it, they only give it like two hours. It's like, that's not enough time. So yeah, I guess I could talk, I could talk for a while about shadow bands, but uh, that's kind of where I'm, my head's at with that. Irvine, sorry, man, if I'm missing your, if I'm missing your question, we got a lot of questions coming through. All right, Carlos asks, shorts, reels, lasso, what are your thoughts? So I think we're talking about YouTube shorts, reels, I don't even know what those are, and lasso. So I, yeah, I don't really know, man. I know YouTube shorts is coming and that's supposed to be a TikTok competitor. Could be interesting with the music licensing. Time Warp says, I had a vid go 7.5 million views about a month ago. Should I create a new video of the same thing? Uh... I mean, it might be worth a shot. I personally don't do that, but I have seen people repost successful content and it goes viral again. I've also seen people repost successful content and it just totally flops. So yeah, I don't know. I, I guess that's something I haven't really exper experimented with that much. Mad Catter, what's better, quality or quantity? Both, find a good mix of both. I'll tell you this, very few people on TikTok are doing such high quality that they can't do multiple posts per day. I really feel that way. Zach King. I've never seen anybody on the quality level of Zach King, okay? And he's posting a couple times a week. So if you're posting less than Zach King, um, I, yeah, I get it. You know, people have full-time jobs and stuff like that, but still. Pe most people should be able to post more than a couple times per week. Theo asks, analytics always say, don't make the for you page. What's going on and how do I fix it? So just because analytics say you're not going to the for you page, there, there still could be a few, um, a few instances of it going to the for you page that maybe just didn't, didn't warrant even a 1% in, in your little um, graph there on your, for, uh, on your pro mode analytics. So I wouldn't assume that um, it, it didn't go to the for you page at all. What maybe happened was it went to the For You page for maybe three to five people and it just totally flopped and then they just didn't bother anymore. So maybe it did it did well with your followers, but not necessarily the For You page. So I, one thing I would also look at is um, like if you did the hype for hype, follow for follow type stuff and you got a lot of people following you, but they don't actually like your content. And then so like TikTok is going to serve your content to your followers first. Um, maybe, and I, I don't know exactly how it works, but I think it's something along these lines. So your followers, they don't care about your content. They only followed you because they're one of their favorite creators told them to or whatever, or maybe because they thought you would like them or follow them back, but they're just swiping past your content. And then TikTok algorithm is like, well, if this person's followers don't even like their content, why would we really take this seriously on the For You page? So let's, let's maybe go with somebody else whose followers actually do like their stuff. And that's kind of the pitfall of doing follow for follow. I'm not, I'm not saying you did that, but that could be um, a situation where that's happening. What is the proper way to go live? Pooh Johnny asked that. Nice name, bro. <laughs> uh, the proper way to go live. Okay, well, proper way to go live, I think, is to have a plan. Um, I would say... what is the main reason that you want to go live? Like, do you just want to like give value to your, to your existing followers? Do, is there some sort of call to action that, that you want them to do? Um, and then like build up to that. I would say just make that the focus of it, but uh, you know, bring them in with some value, give them value. And of course I have an education channel. So like if you have a dance channel, maybe you're dancing for them. Uh, maybe they get to pick the song you dance to for like, the biggest gifts or whatever. Um, yeah, just kind of like, I would say have a call to action or something. 
give them a lot of value and then finish by asking the call to action. Like to call the call to action to this one is, okay, the biggest gifter here is gonna get a profile review, which is actually very special because it's not even something that I sell outside of my paid three month consulting engagements. So um, I think that's pretty cool for people to be able to get that. So that's kind of my call to action. And uh, you, you need to find what works for you, but think about your lives as a way to connect, engage, and um, really monetize your TikTok account. It's the easiest way to monetize your TikTok account. Cor, Cor Bendover says, <laughs> these usernames, y'all, come on. I post edgy, hey, John Day, what's up? I post edgy offensive content. How do I find my audience without getting banned? Okay. Uh, so first of all, TikTok might not be the place for you, depending on the level of your edginess and offensiveness. Um, we're seeing a lot of over the over the line humor. Kind of get kind of get uh, suppressed and that kind of thing. So maybe like for you, I might do like YouTube or Instagram being like the main source of your 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 true content and maybe. TikTok is more your vanilla watered down stuff that kind of fits within the community guidelines, you know. Yeah, yeah I don't I don't think a lot. Now we've seen we've seen examples of over the top humor do well here, but I think going forward we're going to see less and less of that. All right, uh, I'm going to set a five minute timer. This is going to be your final chance to get in your gifts for the profile review again. Top gifter top total gifts during this live stream and we're going to go five more minutes uh we'll win a profile review which will include i'll go through your account i'll give you the top three things i think you need to be focusing on in order to uh, take your account to the next level i'm going to post that review on my tiktok to my sixty thousand followers it'll get at least a couple thousand views hopefully a lot more potential in millions not impossible unlikely but possible all right so i'm gonna set the five minute timer now alexa start a timer for five minutes minutes starting now sorry if i just set off your alexis but now you have the exact same timer as i do if, if that happened <laughs> all right let's go through a few more questions how many times should i go live per week um it depends on whether or not your the goal of your channel is growth or is it converting your existing followers so i think a pitfall is going live every single day like, I don't know. And it can work for some people, don't get me wrong. But I think if you're going live every day, I'd, I'd rather, I'd probably rather you use that time to create a bunch of good, really good TikToks. Because you've got to remember, those lives, as soon as you end them, they're gone forever. Unless you're doing what I'm doing and recording them, which I haven't really seen anybody else doing on TikTok, to be honest with you. Um, so... And when you make a good TikTok, that's that's going to be up whether you're sleeping, whether you're working, whether you're playing video games, whatever. That's like a way that those TikToks, especially if you have a call to action, you have a really good hook. It's engaging. You have the call to action at the end. That's going to be growing your account while you sleep, while you play video games, while you're hanging out with your friends and family. Um, so that's going to grow your account a lot faster than going live. So I'd much rather for long term growth. And short-term growth, I'd rather I'd rather y'all be creating good content instead of going live so much. I think people just they try to monetize too early. You're not going to be making much, if any, money. Like if you only have a couple thousand followers, so I'd rather you focus on growth until you can really make some money from your lives. Dominic asked, "My account just dropped off. It stopped doing well. What do I do?" Okay, so first thing I would look at is like how many times have you posted? Um, a lot of people ask me that question and they've only done like a couple posts that have not performed well. Well, I would say like post 20 posts, 10 to 20, and before you really decide things are, like you might've just posted two crappy videos. They might've just sucked. Sorry if that sounds mean, but maybe that's true. Um, so just keep posting and see like, okay, well was it just bad videos or because a lot of people just jump the gun with that question. So that's that's kind of, uh, that's kind of how I'm going to leave that one. All right, we got two minutes and 30 seconds. Final chance to get your gifts in for the profile review. All right. My one, the teddy bear says. Uh, 
My one viral video is a video I reposted three times. Why is this? Why now? Same audio. Well, there's an example, y'all. People were asking, should you repost a viral video? Uh, it looks like it can work. I haven't personally done this so much. Well, every time I reposted a video, I privated the first one. And maybe that wasn't necessary, but it worked for me. So, um, yeah, I guess it's something I need to experiment more with. Maybe I'll upload my uh, m one of my viral videos and just see what happens. We'll see. Um, Jenny asks, when you go live, can you control minors from coming in? I think that you can, uh, I don't think you can. Yeah, minors are gonna come in. So uh, first question is why are you worried about that? What are you doing on your live that you don't want minors in there? Um, all right, one minute and 17 seconds left. Final chance to get your gifts in. All right, Theater Kid says, is it possible to make so many vids that you need a new account? By the way, it's Olivia. Oh, what's up, Olivia? Um, I would say, I would say no. Just keep all your videos on the same account. Um, about 80% of your content or like four out of every five that you post should be like whatever it is that you want to be known for. And then one you can kind of play around with, experiment with maybe one out of every four, one out of every five you can experiment with. All right, 45 seconds left. Last chance to get your gifts in. 45 seconds. What program do I use to record live? Well, if you're on an iPhone, it's very simple. You just record your screen and you turn your mic on. So it's picking up my voice through the, through the, um, through the microphone and it's just recording my screen. And then I'm gonna go into some video editing software and make it more YouTube friendly. And I'm gonna put this up on my YouTube, which is just Jeff Corrett on YouTube. So y'all should follow me there. 20 seconds, last chance to get your gifts in, let's go. How many times should I post a day? Um, at least one, unless your quality is so high that you can't do it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Oh, look at Cam throwing in the concert. All right, y'all. I'm going to let, I'm going to check and see who won. So I'm going to end this stream right now. Alexa, turn off. All right. So if you are, um, if you're the winner, I'm going to DM you and let you know, look for this on YouTube. If you missed the first couple minutes or whatever. So Y'all go out there. I want to see some awesome content from y'all. Tag me in your comments if you want me to look at your video. I can't necessarily give my thoughts, but I promise if you comment me in the description of your video, I will most definitely watch it. I may not be able to give feedback for everyone, but I will look at your uh, video. So y'all go out there, have a great day, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Hope you enjoyed my live TikTok growth Q&A. If you found this valuable, which I think you did if you've made it this long, go ahead and click that follow button and that thumbs up. I'd appreciate it a lot. And um, if you are unfamiliar with my TikTok, it's at Jeff Corrette. And I'll see you there. Enjoy the rest of your day.